Stop the music. We're going to do this play and we're going to do it right. Lucy, get those costumes and scripts and pass them out. Now the script girl will be handing out your parts. Now, while the script girl hands out the parts, today's Christmas video, we're going to be having a look at the memory lane of Charlie Brown's Christmas, Charlie Brown with megaphone, director's chair, clipboard, and staged dancing display base. So the first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall Chuck stands, taking the Ultra Measuretron and putting it right to the very top of his head. I think that's about right. Stopping it right there. There we go. All right. Let's get going. 5.3 inches in height is Charlie Brown. We'll do some size comparisons in a second. Switching that, however, over to centimeters first, you're looking at 13.6 centimeters in height. As promised, here are some size comparisons. We'll put him next to his outside self. We'll go ahead and take his hat off too, to show you that the figures are exactly the same. Well, not exactly the same. The torso is the same. The sleeves are, are however different and the heads are exactly the same. In fact, looking at them side by side, you would think it was just simply a repaint. Well, again, the only thing that they've really done differently is the arms, but I'm sure that the arms have carried over from other figures as well. Here, you have a sleeveless Charlie Brown, but the faces are identical to one another, except for the fact that this one has a little hat on top of his head. Here it is also next to Linus. Just so you can see, Linus is a little bit smaller than Charlie Brown. Now, were the 2004 releases from Memory Lane 2004, 14 years ago, coming on to 15 years ago, there were four figures slated for the theatrical, the theater playset that we're going to be looking at in the next couple of videos. The other six figures, Charlie Brown, Linus, Pigpen, Sally, Lucy, and Schroeder were all outside characters. They came with snow. These ones will come with the actual playset for the theater when they're setting up the, the school play. Uh, there are, again, there are only four of them. There's Charlie Brown, Snoopy, Pigpen, and Frida, which we'll be looking at in a second. I kind of, again, don't understand why Schroeder would not have been put into the mix when it comes to the figures that are built for inside. Yet, nonetheless, this is the characters that Memory Lane decided to go with. Let's have a look at Charlie Brown's accessories. For being a director, Charlie Brown does get a fair bit, although, unfortunately, some of the things can't be held properly with the figure. I'll talk about that in a second. In the meantime, though, let's have a look at the display base, a very different sort of display base than the snowy bottom that came included with the other figures that we've looked at thus far. This one's neat because it does actually have the option to spin the figures. You can actually have them look as if they're dancing. This plays into one of the characters, com my previous comments on these characters, as to why they needed to have pegs. Why did they have peg holes on the undersides of their feet? Well, not so much for the snow base, but certainly for this display base. Let's put it flatly down so we don't knock poor Charlie Brown down. You can, as you can see, spin the characters as if they are dancing. I would have loved that more characters would have been released under the uh, the play play set, but nonetheless, we only got the four figures. Um, they do give you a little bit of a increase in the length of the bottom here so that there this doesn't rub up against the surface of wherever you've got this display. Um, it's not the most stable of connections. You can see it's a little on the uh, little shaky side, if you will. Speaking of not so certain about it, these clips are something that worries me quite a bit. The idea is they're supposed to, when you get multiples of these, this little tab slots into these little, well, this groove here. You can see that they alternate from one another. So this groove, this slot will fit into this notch here, this little tab here. I don't know how many times you can do that, take this off, put it back on before you run the risk of stress marks developing on these little clips and eventually breaking. 
some nice, really nice flooring here, matching the colors of the, uh, you know, again, the little school play that they were going to be putting on. So you can either put Par Charlie Brown on that stand, or they also include a director's chair, which I have to say looks quite nice. It's got some good coloring here, almost like a greenish, kind of greenish brown, greenish beige happening here. And then you've got almost a creamsicle orange happening on the back with the director written very clearly across the back of the uh, the chair there. It doesn't have any posability. There's nothing you can really move to it. And ideally, Charlie Brown is supposed to sit on that. Well, if you are not new strangers to this channel and certainly to not these videos, you'll probably know that the figures only bend so far. That's as far as you can actually get them. So when you put Charlie Brown in his chair, you can see this big awkward gap happening between where his butt sh is and stops to the actual seating of the chair. There's no other way you can really bend the figure to fit him any bit better than that. So looking from the front, it doesn't look it doesn't look terrible, but it doesn't allow him to stand or sit very easy. If anything, I'm really just resting the back of his head against the back of the chair, and that's really what's keeping him from falling over. So again, I kind of wish that they could have done something a little bit different. It, at the very least, don't tease the fact there's a director's chair if you can't actually have a character that sits properly in it. You could also, in theory, just have the chair in the back here, and you could simply have Charlie Brown standing in front of it as an option as well. And of course, the more we expand onto this, the more additional playset pieces we can eventually put together, kind of like what we did with the snow. Speaking of, uh, well, not speaking of snow, but speaking of his other accessories, he comes also with his megaphone. Megaphone is just very simply cast in uh, orange plastic. Unfortunately, though, look at the handle. Look at the way the handle is. Now look at the way Charlie Brown's hands are. If you line up the two, it doesn't connect in place. I thought, okay, maybe if I bring it up a little bit higher. No, it does not connect in place. It seems almost, looking at his hands, that his hands were intended for a different type of handle. This is the handle that is ultimately attached to the megaphone. But there's no way to, there's no way for him to actually hold it. I know what you're thinking. What about the other hand? Well, on the other hand, this one, same idea. It, it's not long enough. This loop should have draped further down so it could at the very least clip around him. It almost seems as if this is an accessory that doesn't belong to this character. So again, much like the chair, it sort of has to sit next to the figure as opposed to simply being something that can attach into the figure's hand. Then you get the director's notes here. Keep directions simple. Point right equals focus attention stage right. Slashing motion across the throat equals cut scene short. Revolving motion with hands, pick up the tempo. And spread hands apart means slow down. A nice looking clipboard. I feel like it could have carried over from the one that we got with Sally. Obviously notes being a little bit differently written. I'll have to go see if I can grab that. But one thing as well, <laughs> you guessed it, it doesn't fit into his hand. This hand is way too open of a grip that the clipboard just slides straight through it. What about the other hand, the person yells from the back of the crowd? Well, this hand is a little bit better, but because his thumb doesn't stick far enough forward, there's nothing really holding the clipboard from falling over or falling out of his hand. So if you collectively have both hands happening, you can sort of wish that it stays in place. Ultimately, it just sort of sits against Charlie Brown's tummy. And it's enough to kind of get it to stay sometimes. But it's really just a lot of luck, a lot of patience, and not moving it whatsoever. And then the clipboard stays into his hands. Seriously, I don't know why this is such a difficult situation that we're all currently in. Me being the greater percentage of that individual's currently engaged in this. I don't know why they couldn't have just made the hands suited for accessories that they deliberately included with the figure. Calming my frustrations down, I want to also show you the two clipboards that came included with the figures. Now this one here was for Sally, this one here is for Charlie Brown. What's interesting though is if I tip it to the side, Sally's is thicker than Charlie Brown's. It didn't really need to be, other than just the coloring being different. 
The thickness of paper certainly didn't have to change. The curl is the same on the side. The shape, yes, I'll give it that. The shape is different on the paper, but they really could have saved the cost of making a brand new mold and just reused the exact same clipboards, but they didn't ultimately do that. Again, here's the two clipboards. Sally's, from what I remember, she actually held hers a little bit better than poor Chuck. Anyways, we will push forward. So we'll move the accessories to the back or just a little bit out of the way and we'll have a look at Charlie Brown. The good thing about this particular Charlie Brown is this is not specifically for Charlie Brown's Christmas. Somebody yells in the background, it is Charlie Brown's Christmas. I know, I know, but if you want specifically just any Charlie Brown, any Charlie Brown figure that doesn't denote a specific holiday special, this one actually fits the bill quite well because he's just wearing his traditional Charlie Brown uh, little lightning bolt, little cross hatching shirt there. Everything about him, like I said, is stuff that you would normally expect to find from Charlie Brown, complete with a face, a very smiley face, which could easily be turned into a frown or just being defeated. Speaking of faces, I'm going to just move this out of the way. Look at me moving all these accessories out of the way. I want to bring the packaging also in to play here for a second because there's something I want to show you. If you go up, well, I'll go up. You can stay where you are. You'll see that the Charlie Brown face here actually has a different expression altogether. The hair, of course, the nose and the ears are all the same. But the Charlie Brown here depicted on the back of the packaging, which I might also add was for this particular figure, he has his mouth open, as a, almost as if he's talking, and he just has regular dotted eyes. He doesn't have the little side slashes there. I don't know why they ultimately didn't give us that figure right there, because the mold would have just stayed the same. There's nothing you would have changed to it other than just painting it differently. This isn't raised in any way, nor is this raised. So I'm wondering why we gave that we got the head, same head sculpt as the one that was the outside Charlie Brown, which you can see right down there. We've already had a look at on this channel. Why they gave us the exact same head sculpt instead of giving us the one that's right here. Okay, we'll move that out of the way. Coloring is very good on this guy. Uh, one good thing about him as well is he does not have any of the oil slick goop that was all over the other figure. His feet, his shoes are a little on the shinier side, but I don't feel as if anything's really coming off onto my fingers. So that so far is pretty good. Also, the legs are relatively stiff. They're not loose like some of the other figures that we've looked at before. Also, that's really quite good. Okay, so let's go through his posability. His head rotates all the way around. You could really do this until the cows come home if you wanted to. I mean, I know you guys have places you need to go, people you need to see. Mince meat pies you need to be making. Does anybody make mince meat pies, min mince meat tarts anymore? Those things are delicious. Arms move back and forth. Uh, the arms rotate here. Hands, I should say, rotate right there. And the elbows also rotate. So I guess if you wanted to, you can have Charlie Brown like sitting on top of like a ledge or you could pretend like he's driving. Imaginary, of course. Waist swivels. Legs do go forward and back. Uh, unfortunately, not the means necessarily to be able to display the figure like that. That would be awesome if that was the case. Even if they had given us just like a, like a clear step ledge, just a triangular piece of clear plastic that had a peg that went up like this, you could pop that right onto the peg and you could have it as if the, the figure's actually walking. That's some good ideas, probably not something they would have thought of back in 2004. Like I said though, the legs move hinge back and forth and then there's that waist swivel. So he does have all the same posability as his outside counterpart. Of course, this one does benefit for the fact that he has all these, all these extra accessories as well. I just wish poor Charlie Brown was able to actually hold them. There is absolutely no guarantee that that clipboard's gonna stay in Charlie Brown's hands for the rest of final looks, so I'll make this really quick. I like this particular Charlie Brown because it's just a default Charlie Brown. In fact, actually, all the indoor kids, and Snoopy included, all have their regular outfits. So if you wanted to display them simply just as Peanuts figures, you can certainly do that. This does have the benefit of having the display base that has a little swivel uh, turn table, if you want to call it, on the very top. It's a little loose, but at least it gets the point across if you want to have the figures dancing, so to speak, as they did in the Christmas special. Unfortunately, Charlie Brown can't hold any of his accessories. 
I'm even surprised looking at it right now that he is currently holding his clipboard and hasn't dropped it yet. Oh great, now I've jinxed it. But he can't hold his megaphone and ideally he really can't sit properly in his director's chair. They sort of tease you with all these accessories that you really ultimately can't do anything with. It's still a neat looking display. I kind of wish that we had gotten more characters with this display than we did with the outside setup. Schroeder is still something I'm scratching my head over. Why didn't he come as one of the figures for this setup and not the one outside? I can't imagine him playing piano outside. Somebody's gonna probably send me a screenshot. Yes, it did happen. Okay, fantastic, it did happen. But when I think of the Charlie Brown Christmas special, I always think of Lucy sitting on top of the piano or leaning against the piano, trying to get Shorter to play Jingle Bells. Not playing it outside though, playing it inside. Needless to say, we're gonna have a look at the rest of the three figures of the 2004 lineup of Charlie Brown's Christmas. We've already looked at the snow-based characters. Now we're gonna be having a look at the characters that were inside during the school play. So hopefully you guys will stay tuned for that. Don't worry though, there's gonna be other Christmas related videos coming your way. And don't worry even still, if Christmas isn't your thing and you just wanna check out some more horror reviews and do more action figures of superheroes, yells out somebody else from the back of the crowd. Don't worry, all that stuff will still be happening. We're gonna kind of mix and match it over the rest of December. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below. That will at the least, at the very least, guarantee that you'll somewhat get all the videos that are coming onto this channel. The best way to guarantee you that you haven't missed out on anything though is to swing over to the homepage as soon as you finish this video. See if there's anything you may have missed along the way. And more videos, guys, like I said, will be coming your way, so stay tuned for those. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.